ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we got some really exciting AMD GPU news, finally. So today at CES, AMD announced some CPU news also. I don't really want to talk about that uh, here today because we didn't really get that much information. Um, it's going to be 7 nanometers, stuff we basically already knew. So I think uh, we'll wait till more information comes out and then you could probably make a better video about it, talking about all the information there. But we did get quite a bit of information about the Radeon 7, which is actually going to be coming out in about a month's time. So this is all happening relatively quickly. So the Radeon 7 is going to succeed the Vega 64 and it is similar in quite a few ways. Now it is 7 nanometer, so that's really really good. However, it's actually getting like a little bit of a specs nerf, you might say. Uh, not as many compute units as the Vega 64, obviously had 64, the Radeon 7, that drops down to 60, which means stream processor wise you're getting 3840, as opposed to the Vega 64, which had 4096. However, the ROPs, the raster operators, that's gone up from 64 to 128, so that should actually be really good. And the uh, TMUs have also dropped off a little bit, going from 256 down to 240. So you might think, well, that's not good, Kevin. I mean, that must mean the performance is worse, right? No. So let's not make it too complicated, but because they're going down to seven nanometer, uh, the clock speeds are also going to be quite a bit higher uh, than what we saw with Vega 64. And overall, from what AMD is saying, this should be matching the RTX 2080. Now, I will say that from what they showed, the benchmarks were, well, it was pretty much tied, but it was at 4K. And generally, the AMD cards, as we've seen previously with the Vega cards, and even before that with the Fury cards, they tend to do better in the uh, high resolutions. If you guys remember back to when the Fury X came out, AMD was showing benchmarks at the time with it tying with uh, Nvidia's cards, uh, but that was all at 4K. And then when we actually got them, we found that at 1080p, uh, they were running into a bit of trouble. So as always, these are AMD's benchmarks is what they're saying. Uh, so we'll have to see for ourselves when we do our independent testing how it compares, but I would say, for me, I would think it will be probably very close to the uh, RTX 2080, maybe like two or three percent either way uh, on average, but of course it'll probably be very game specific as well. Now, memory wise, it's gonna be coming with 16 gigabytes of what we assume HBM2 memory. It's gonna to be tons and there's a heap of memory bandwidth there as well. So that's going to be great. 16 gigabytes is a lot. <laughs> so uh, double the amount that you'd get with the 2080. So if that's a reason for you to buy, you know, you are getting more. So that's good. However, at the same time, we do have to remember that the 2080 does also come with things that the Radeon 7 will not be coming with. All the stuff to do with ray tracing, the tensor cores and uh, DLSS. So yes, the Radeon 7 will have that extra memory but remember that the 2080 still has all that stuff which as of right now is not a super compelling reason to pick the 2080 over it but maybe in the future it may become a more compelling reason although dlss is showing to be very very promising so that you know has to be considered now tdp wise no firm numbers yet but i'd imagine it'll be around 300 watts Mm, yeah, that's decent. Uh, pretty much what we've seen before. So, yeah, I don't know. AMD's always prioritized performance over power, so I don't know if any of you guys would be surprised by that. But if we take a strip step back, uh, long steps back, 290X, that was 300 watt TDP. Um, the Fury X as well, that had a 275 watt TDP. The Vega 64, the liquid cooled one was 350. And uh, so we'd assume this one would come in at about 300. And as you saw in the pictures of the GPU itself, there are uh, dual eight pin power connectors there, which is the same as what uh, we saw on the Vega 64 and also on the Fury X. Now, clock speed wise, oh, by comparison, 
to compare that to the 2080, the 2080 is at 215 watts, remember. So uh, yeah, it's going to be quite, it's probably going to chug quite a bit more power than the 2080. Now, as far as the clock speeds go, so we're hearing that it's going to be about 1450 megahertz on the base clock. Okay, so the 2080 for reference is about uh, 1515 on the base. And then on the boost, it's going like it'll be about 1800 megahertz as opposed to the 1710 of the uh, 2080, although a lot of models of 2080, um, they will come out of the box uh, factory overclock to 1800 megahertz. We're also hearing that that may not be the actual boost clock of the Radeon 7, that just may be the peak speed. So it may just dip up there quickly and then it may come down. Uh, I'm not really 100% sure on that. As I said, we don't have the entirety of the information to go off right now, but we do have a good amount but even then, that will be a good clock speed increase over what we've seen previously with uh, Vega and the Fury series, which, yeah, they were really held back by their lower clock speeds compared to the NVIDIA cards at the time. Now, price-wise, it's going to be coming in at $699, US so the same as the base price of the 2080. And this is what seems to have gotten a lot of people upset, but really, you could have seen it coming. So the 2080, that's the base price, 700 US dollars. Okay, the founders are 800. And a lot of the 2080s you'll see out there right now hover around that 800 mark. You have to go into the more entry level models to get ones closer to that $700 price. Whereas with this for the AMD reference model, they're saying 700. So that's good. We could. Uh, assume that most models of the Radeon 7 will be at that $700 mark. You get more premium models, they'll be a bit more expensive. But I think generally speaking, the Radeon 7 will be a little bit cheaper than the 2080. That's my feeling anyway. You could also say that you're maybe getting a little bit more value for your money uh, because of the extra memory. But that's kind of difficult to say because also, as I said, with the 2080, you get all the tensor cores, all the ray tracing, DLSS stuff. So that one, I think, kind of evens out. So what do I make of this then, entirely, compared to the 2080, which is going to be its main competitor? So I really like the design, the, the, the triple fan cooler. That looks cool. For reference model, it looks awesome. I really like it. Yeah, it looks stunning. So I actually really like the reference design cooler. That looks awesome. Uh, as far as the GPU itself, I feel like it's a little late. Um, you may say, well, Kevin, the 2080s, you know, that's not, only just came out. Yes, but if it's just matching the 2080 while being pretty much the same price as the 2080, uh, while having more features in some area, more memory, I should say, but then less features in other areas, this just seems like it will be tying with NVIDIA. Like this is just something for the people that are more AMD fanboys, I guess you might say, who were looking for a powerful new GPU but couldn't bring themselves to buy the 2080. Well, now they have a GPU. So they'll go towards the Radeon 7. Uh, of course, we can only really guess so much based off specs alone. And once we get the GPUs in hand, actually, do our testing, then we'll be able to provide much more information and give you guys much better opinions uh, on if you should buy it or not. But I think it's it's a decent response for AMD. I don't think this is particularly bad value for what you're getting. $700, a lot of money, but it is an enthusiast grade GPU. You guys need to remember the value is supposed to diminish as it goes up. I'm not sure if it's supposed to is the thing, but that's how the market's segmented. Your mid-range cards are always going to be where the best value is, and as you get towards the the higher ends, the value tends to drop off in favor of just outright performance. So, yeah, I think it'll be an interesting GPU, and it should give NVIDIA a bit of competition uh, in their top ends. At least they won't be just out there by themselves. It's looking like it'll probably be about 30% more powerful than the Vega 64, so that'll be a good uptick. Uh, if you were to say had a Vega 64, that would mean it would be... Can, you know, pretty, pretty compelling option there. I mean, 30% upgrade in performance is nothing to laugh at. And compared to the 2080, I mean, yeah, maybe give it a little bit of a run for its money, but it will be doing so uh, while using more power 
and probably lacking some of the features that the 2080 has. But it is doing it with more memory, which is going to raise the question of uh, how much do you really need for a lot of enthusiasts out there. I think most of us would say, hey, if we could get more for the same amount of money, why not? So that's really my opinion on it right now. I, I can't really say too much because it's just early days, but yeah, I'm very excited to test this out. I will be doing a showdown with the Radeon 7 versus the RTX 2080. That'll be a really fun video to do. Uh, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm seeing sort of two opinions so far. There's some people that are like, yay, finally AMD, bring something to the high end. We've been waiting for so long, you know, excited. Uh, then others that are more disappointed saying, oh, come on, we wanted, you know, something that would kill like the 2080 Ti for like $500, you know, those people. <laughs> Maybe not that extreme, you guys know what I mean. Uh, some of you guys were just disappointed, you were hoping they would be bringing more to the table than just something that would match the 2080 while also pretty much matching the 2080 in price. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think about it. Uh, if you want to catch my Radeon 7 versus RTX 2080 showdown as soon as it drops, then hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.